702. Trey Cunningham. The child of Joe Cunningham. Good stuff, good stuff. Yes, Jay. Every time I hear Trey sing, yeah. if I'm not watching like a video, I always have to like pause and be like, wait, is this Trey Cunningham or is this Mike Hartendorf? Because their voices are very, very similar. Good stuff, is man. Is that just me or? That's just you. Oh. Uh, is Trey practicing that out in front of his house on Cross Island? Because, uh, man, uh, he's, a, he's a great musician. He is. Yeah. Awesome. Good stuff. Hey, we only do local music. We're biased uh, here on the link. And did you, did you see, like, when he, when, you know, when he enlisted and when he joined um, the Army, when he was playing in, like, the Army band, yeah. when they would, like, gig at the mall or something yep. like that, they would draw huge crowds. Yeah. We actually had him in uh, the guard band um, a couple times on Live Local Fridays. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sean, I wanted to bend your ear a little bit. Something we didn't get to talk about yesterday, but uh, the CCU has approved a 10% hike to water bills. Uh, the same increase could come next year, and then I believe there's another increase that's slated to come down. I mean, this is kind of huge. It's 10% plus 10% next year plus, I believe, another uh, 7%. So it's a 27% increase in water rates. Uh, the timing of this, uh, Sean? You know, the uh, CCU has been, as you, if you've been following them over the last year, they've kind of pushed back on trying to do any type of actions uh, relative to everyone kind of struggling through the pandemic. So as they're uh, looking to make some major improvements to the water system, uh, you know, I mean, we've we've been watching it for, for many, many years that uh, they'll, you know, they're trying to hold back as much as they can. Uh, you know, uh, as you and as you know, living in the South, uh, Chris, um, when you drive by some of these places and they're trying to upgrade the facilities. It makes uh, some sense. Uh, it's going to hit pocketbooks pretty hard. Um, I mean, there's no question. Uh, but you know, obviously, if, if we're getting that water delivery, um, then you know, I guess we just have to you know trust in the fact that them and the uh, and the uh, Public Utilities Commission is going to look at the re- review of the whole, you know, the whole lot of projects and the like, and hopefully they'll uh, not make it so high. I guess, for lack of a better word, but right. it, it, it's something for it's for good stuff. I mean, yeah. let, let's uh, hope they can bring it down a little bit. Right. I mean, thirty percent is thirty percent, no matter what. Oh, yeah. but, right. I mean, I don't really know how much kicking and screaming we could do about it. Uh, it kind of seems like it's uh, well, it must still be approved by the Public Utilities Commission, right? Yeah, I think that's where the, the biggest uh, hurdle is going to be. And, and maybe it's not 30, maybe it's, you know, 15 or mm-hmm. something. They're trying to find a way to get in the middle because obviously it's going to be all of our, all residents are going to be funding this. But we, we expect that we pay that, you know, we're going to be paying that, that the delivery is going to be there when we need it. Right. Yeah. It is what it is, Sean. Uh, well, it, it's uh, <laughs> making sure that we get, they have enough funds to, yeah. to, to, to take care of the things that they need to the, for the infrastructure. Right. Uh, I just feel like that's the conversation ender. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it is what it is. All right. Later. Okay. Why? Uh, Sean, thanks yeah, for having no, I, I mean, I follow, I follow it hard, man. I, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that they don't go all the way up to the 30. I hope mm-hmm. they take it down a little bit. Give us some time you know, and then improve the service. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, touch it. Go ahead, Jay. Oh, well, actually, uh, speaking of conversation, um, we put the link in our comment stream for you guys to subscribe to Sean's podcast. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And that's all. Uh, Sean, what do you got coming up next? Uh, actually, I just uh, I was having a little bit of trouble on my end. I got it. Uh, the other uh, platforms were up, but uh, this one's focused on tourism and the kind of the reboot. I, I was mentioning, you know, uh, you know, I was a little bit cranky. Maybe it was the Angelina Colossa song that got me fired up. But it was, the, it's the Safe Travels program and talking about how, you know, you know, if if it's a good thing for getting all the businesses up and just telling everyone we're safe, instead of, you know, I love our Mononco, but if we can't find that number, why don't we put that money back into the Safe Travels program and give uh, those businesses a chance to get that stamp of approval mm. from the world, uh, from the from the travel uh, council. And then let's show them we're safe. I mean, yeah. that sounds like more reasonable amount of money right now to be putting in. Yes, it's giving GVB that those funds, but it's really giving it to those local businesses to to do all those things that they're asking to uh, make Guam safe. So we should be pitching that move. And so the the podcast this week is about that and about the territories and their efforts to keep uh, themselves safe and reopen for tourism. Yeah, it's interesting, Sean, because it seems like, um, I don't know if it's like a cart before the horse or chicken and egg kind of deal, but it seems like even going back to last year, our uh, posture was more like, let's reopen the island and see who comes instead of like, let's fix everything here, make sure everybody's safe, stand all these businesses up. 
get it ready and get it set, you know. That's like when you have company. What's the first thing you do? You clean up your area, right? You make sure everything's looking good, working right, right yeah. So interesting. No, and, and also, Chris and, and Jason, the, the biggest thing, too, is is the amount of um, – is, is, let's be real about what we're going to be getting. I mean, right now, it's yeah. Taiwan is open, but our two major markets of Japan and Korea are not. And uh, the podcast kind of explores those numbers in a little bit more in depth, also kind of the, the federal side of the house and how they're also reacting to uh, – trying to reopen in some places because obviously you got states like texas and florida that are reopened right. uh california will reopen on i think it's uh, june 15th but the rest of the country is still pretty much locked down right yeah and i mean lockdown is a relative term right because they're locked down versus like what we experienced in our lockdown sometimes it's like night and day right it is it sure is and so so that's the the podcast for this week mm -hmm. and so if you uh, thanks for plugging it again, Jason yeah. and Chris. The, again, that's it. That's all. It's on all the podcast apps, Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio. It's over there on Amazon Music, uh, no, Stitcher. Yeah. And it's coming soon to the KUAM Podcast Network yeah, as, sure, uh, as well. Yeah. Sean, ah, thank you, Chris. Yeah, we're talking, we're, yeah. Now we can finally talk about it. Yes, thank you, Chris. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting there soon. I'm so hoping. baby steps, brother. Uh, Sean, heck let me yeah, ask you, heck, yeah. there's going to be so much money floating around uh, with the stimulus, with whatever – uh, assistance relief or grant programs that's going to uh, come out of this 600 some million out of the American Rescue Plan, uh, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. So there's just so much money that's going to be circulating on uh, Guam in lieu of like uh, a travel corridor or, uh, you know, safe travels program or uh, tourism uh, bubble. How uh, key do you think locals are going to be in uh, kind of being that stopgap between? when we do get our source markets up and running or Taiwan or whoever it's going to be uh, and where we are now. It's going to be that uh, reinvention of our, our identity, our brand identity um, to the rest of the world. And I think that's going to be the, the key here. I mean, we've had a lot of, uh, you've had a lot on your show over the last uh, year uh, talking about different ways to adjust to this new, call it new normal. And I think people hate that term. Yeah, I'm um, tired of it. Think about, <laughs> yeah, but it gets overused at times. But we need to think about all of this time. We should be looking at how we re reinvent ourselves as a destination yeah. to tourists, and and the kinds of things we want our um, our visitors to remember us by. We got a lot of places that we can invest in the Guam Museum, some of these different uh, landmark sites across the island, all the from Fort Apugan down to Fort Soledad to the to you name it. Uh, it needs a lot of help. And so we're thinking of, okay, let's um, let's do these other big, big things. We need to focus on what really, what do we want to see for our uh, future is relative to this important industry of ours. Yeah. If the military is going to build up, we got to have a tourist buildup and it needs to be very measured and, and everyone will be involved. It's not just going to be the, the government, it's going to be the private sector. It has to be private sector driven or else it's not just not going to work. Right. Um, you know, the, the silver lining and thing, Sean, is like, like I said, with all the money that's coming in and, and all the <clears throat> assistance for restaurants and uh, businesses that are not necessarily part of the ARP money we're getting from the gov, but like these separate like SBA programs. Oh, yes. I feel like when the tourists finally do come, they're going to be coming to a place that's going to be, God, pretty cherry. I mean, we should be pretty cherry by the time the tourists start coming. Oh, yes. Um, I, I, if you heard uh, Mary Rhodes this past week, uh, I'm on that team mm. of helping restaurants as part of the, you know, with the Small Business Development Center. Mm. And so we are working with restaurants and the like. And so the biggest thing is, you're right, the way that the businesses are going to look after this investment uh, is going to be key. Some have kind of fallen the wayside because of, you know, just couldn't sustain. But those that are going to stick around and those that are coming, yeah, it's going to make it a different type of experience for the visitor. And and, and I don't want to just say visitor, it's for all of us too, because yeah. you and I, our families want to go out and have a bite to eat, or they want to go have a, a drink somewhere or whatever, and be out in town. It's going to be better for everyone. And we, we all should be getting behind those kinds of efforts and in uh, helping our number one industry. I, it, it just can't be them by themselves. Right on. That's just a little snibblet of what you can get on the, uh, that's it. That's all uh, podcast. Sean, thanks for coming on, man. Hey, thanks, Chris. Thanks, Jason. And thanks, Joe. So you guys have a great day and I'm going to keep listening. And again, if you guys miss uh, this program, you miss a whole heck of a lot. All right. Have a good weekend, bro. There you go. That's our friend Sean Gumatata with the That's It, That's All podcast.
Uh, he's on Twitter. He's kind of all over the place. Uh, good perspective coming from him, especially because he's got so much experience uh, with uh, the government <laughs> as a former uh, communications director. Uh, God, Homeland Security has just done a lot of stuff. You know, Sean's only three years older than I am, but I remember I, I grew up, you know, air quotes, uh, like what when he first started <laughs> in sports. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know, that's how I followed him. And then when I worked over here, I mean, he gave me a lot of tips. As like, I remember... Best advice that I still hold true to this day that Sean never gave me, he goes, the thing I can tell you about whether you're, you know, writing something, you're on the radio, you're doing broadcast, whatever like that, hear it in your head before it comes out of your mouth. Yeah. Uh, we had a couple, this stuff happens so we had 